looks like real marble? It sure does. We use Surface Pro countertop epoxy to transform this tired old dining table into a beautiful marble look using Surface Pro countertop epoxy. It's so easy to do and you can do it yourself. Stick with me and I'll show you exactly how we did it. You can visit us at any time at surfacepro.com.au. Oh, and if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thanks. So our extension table, we've removed the legs as you can see and I've been able to get it on top of my workbench here. And now the first thing we're gonna be doing is looking for any damage. And I know there's some damage on it, which we've got to repair. Uh, there is a little bit of water damage and I can see that. There's actually, it's actually a melamine top with a little bit of timber beading around the perimeter and uh, water has actually got in on both sides of this extension table. You can see this is the extension portion. I've removed some of the timber guides from underneath, but on both sides uh, or both pieces of this extension table, water has egressed and got in and damaged, you know, and lifted slightly the formica. Now, look, um, you may have something similar. You may have a table which has a little bit of water damage. They can be fixed. And this is what I'm gonna do with this one. If it has a, some sort of laminex or melamine or formica top, um, it can be fixed. If there's a little bit of damage, a little bit of rot, um, the particle board is swelling, it can be cut away and it can be filled. And that's what I intend to do here. I'll begin just to uh, peel away this melamine and expose uh, the substrate underneath. And then I'm going to fill it with our filler and then sand it back and then give it a good clean uh, give it a sand as well probably all the way around and then i think it's going to be ready for our epoxying but so just stick with me and i'm going to get this started right away so first of all i just want to mark roughly where uh put a pencil line roughly where the damage is so i can get my i think i'm going to get actually a stanley knife a sharp stanley knife and cut around see if I can score the uh, melamine and then try and break it away. I don't want to break it away too much. I don't want it starting to peel and I lose you know, a large amount of the melamine. That's not what I want to happen. So I've got to be very careful about how much I peel away. So I, I'm just going to put a pencil mark as to where I see, how I can feel it's actually starting to come away and it, where it's swollen a little bit. And I'm sort of like going to go from about that mark there to down here. It's probably about 200 mils, about six inches, about six inches there-ish, six to seven inches. And this one here, this one here is quite more than on the smaller section here, from about there to about there. And look, sort of feeling where it's ballooned, where it's bubbled, and I'm just going to sort of like come around like so with my pencil mark. And this one's not so bad there. There we go. So I'm gonna give this a bit of a cut, a bit of a scoring with the Stanley knife. We'll see how we go. I might start from this side and work my way back. smaller on this side. Put a bit of pressure on it, trying to get through that melamine. Okay, that's done. 
Now I have both, you know, a chisel and I have this steel scraper here, which is fairly new from a local hardware store. I'm sort of going to be very careful. See how I go here. Just going to gently peel that back. Yeah. So this is actually a particle, but I can see already, this is just a melamine, a melamine sheeting stuck to uh, ordinary particle board underneath. Okay, that's lifting nicely. And I don't want to go past my, there we go, it's gone right up, there you go, wow, that's looking, that just ran up to my score mark and it stopped right there. So I'm very happy about that. There we go, that's beautiful. That little piece has just come out. So um, you probably can't see it yet, uh, what I've done, but this is actually only going as far as my score line, which is what I wanted. Beautiful, there you go, I'll try that now. Get under that, look at that. Beautiful. This is gonna be so easy to fill. Very happy with that. I might try back down here somewhere. Last little bit here. Okay. Very happy with that bit. Okay. This piece here has the greater damage and it really, it really has come up. Let me just put that like that. I can actually get my steel scraper straight underneath that. Very, very easy. A lot of damage there. So, you know, the beauty of being able to, if you can repair an old table, an old tabletop, an old coffee table, um, then, you know, you can save yourself a lot of money. And then, of course, with, with our with Surface Pro Countertop Epoxy, you can really um, bring back to life those bits of furniture and make them look absolutely stunning, more than just bring them back to life. For you absolutely make them look stunning, um, like real marble and real granite, fantastic. And you may have some furniture which is a little bit old, but you want, you want to uh, <laughs> resurrect it. Uh, this is the perfect way to do it. Some of your old furniture, uh, and it doesn't have to be old, it might be your existing furniture, might be your existing kitchen table. You may want to, uh, you know, apply our Surface Pro Countertop Epoxy to to make it look like marble. It doesn't have to be old. In fact, we'll be doing a job soon um, and going over existing marble. It's a marble kitchen, which we'll be doing shortly. And uh, it's not old. So, 
but what I'm saying is that uh, it's great that you can do this if you want to. You can easily renovate and restore and bring back some more life to, you know, old or existing furniture. Uh, you may have to do a little bit of work on it, just a little bit of like what I'm doing now. This is only going to take me probably 20 minutes, if, if that, to get this done. And uh, it'll be hopefully ready for the epoxy. Look at that. That is awesome. Montana, Australia make some excellent spray paints which we use and they also make their universal putty and uh, this is brilliant it's very very good uh, putty which is, is for filling uh, you know joints like this that come away holes in your countertop holes in the in the in a vanity holes in a kitchen tabletop whatever you can also use this product for creating you know a rock edge to make it look like split rock as well very very good good uh, product universal polyester putty and you can get this from montana australia montana colors australia and their website is mtnaustralia.com.au that's mtnaustralia.com.au and if you Actually, you can actually get a bit of a discount if you'd like to mention uh, when you place the order, actually put in uh, the discount code of Surface Pro 10, you will get a discount. So just keep that in mind. If you need any sort of filler, universal filler, brilliant stuff, and you can get a discount if you go to uh, mtnaustralia.com.au and put in the coupon code or the discount code Surface Pro 10 and you'll get a discount.
So that's dried nicely. And now I'm going to sand it back. And uh, I've just got a, uh, my cork block. And this is, um, I'm, I'm using, what is this? This is about 240 grit. Very fine, that's all I need. This will sand back nicely. Very, very impressed with it. By the way, the universal polyester putty from Montana comes in a 500 gram size and a 250 as well, which is what I used. Hardly used anything at all. Uh, fantastic. So away we go. So that's sanded. Very happy with it. Uh, is it perfect? No, it's not. Uh, the product's perfect, but you know, there's a couple of little dips and so on, just very slight dips. It's not perfectly smooth. And you know, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be because I'm covering it over with uh, my color coat of epoxy. And then after that, we're going over with a clear coat again. So, you know, after you have two layers of epoxy, it's certainly going to fill in any slight imperfections. So don't worry if you do this and you haven't got it absolutely perfect, it doesn't matter. Yep. So that's, that's looking fabulous. Very good. So that raised section now has gone. I've taken it down and I'll be able to epoxy straight over the top of, of that. In fact, I'll probably, uh, well, I will give it a, a bit of a spray, probably with a white just to around the edges before I epoxy, but I'll be doing that. And now I'm actually gonna give this a bit of a light sand. Now this tabletop's had many years of life uh, and use. It's a little bit, little bit sticky, a little bit dirty. Um, and look, I could use a, a strong cleaner on it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a light sand. And when you give it a light sand, that will take off a lot of the, you know, the grease and the grime which is sitting on, on the top. So I'll do that right now. So it's now time for the bonding primer. I'm using Dulux uh, Precision. It's a maximum strength bonding primer. It's white and it's just perfect for this. So I've almost used the whole lot and I'm gonna just pour it out and roll it on um, to go over this melamine because melamine's a little bit uh, slippery and shiny. Although I have sanded it back, I still want to uh, put down the uh, bonding primer. So we're primed, it's been a couple of days drying, so it's perfect. I'm gonna give it a light sand with 240 grit sandpaper just to take off any nibs and nubs. And then we're going to start the fun part, which is the epoxy. Sanding's finished and I've just gotta prepare the table with masking tape 
uh, so that I don't get any epoxy over the areas that I don't want it on. That's particularly under here, the framework of the table, uh, the tabletop, I want it, it's fine. Uh, underside here, I need to protect all of that all the way around. So I'll get out the masking tape and begin that. Okay, the preparation is done now. So what we did was we thoroughly masked up around the perimeter of the tabletop to make sure no epoxy gets onto those those areas, which we don't want it to be. Uh, and look, it's this tabletop's as wide as my workbench, and I've had to actually extend uh, with with stir sticks and plastic to uh, cater for the drips on that side. So uh, hopefully all will be okay with that. Um, now, this is, as I said, an extension table, and this is the part which comes out, and we've, as you can see, it's been lined with masking tape and, and plastic, and this piece will just sit here, and I'm just gonna butt it up here, because what we wanna do is make sure that when, when we do the marbling effect and we add our veins, we want to have a continuation of veins going right across so that this piece was cut from one slab of stone. That's what we want to achieve. So I'm going to have to butt it up when I do uh, my epoxying. Um, most of the time, I don't think the people who own this actually use the extension. It's generally tucked underneath. But when they pull it out and use it, they, it, wanna, it wants to look good. And we want to make sure that those veins continue on in a continuous vein right through. Um, once we've done that and it's still wet, what I will do is I will just slightly move it out. Now, if you have an extension table, this is the way to do it. You keep it butted up for the process of epoxying and doing your veins and your effects. Then when you're finished, you need to just lift it and move it away a little bit. And then you need to, you know, rub it along here and just break that surface tension a little bit. It doesn't need a lot of epoxy because it's they're butting together, so it doesn't need a lot of epoxy, but you do want to have some epoxy to seal it. So we'll be rubbing along here and along there so that it goes down slightly, and that's the goal, and I think it's going to work out very, very well. Now, I'm just about ready to begin mixing up the epoxy. Uh, it's uh, going to be a, a, an iceberg white, our iceberg white base. Um, the people that own this table, they want to have a white marble with a couple of grey, a bit of grey and a bit of and black veining going through it. So it's mainly a, a you know a white marble uh, base. And so I'll be using our iceberg uh, paste, and that is a brilliant. Look, this is a brilliant paste because as a as an iceberg, it's called iceberg white and it comes from the blue tones and it resists yellowing. And so we wanna make sure that uh, it doesn't yellow. <clears throat> We're also gonna be using uh, uh, black. This is the uh, black pearl and this is for the black veins. So I'll be putting that into this small cup and also we're using diamond dust. Now the diamond dust will be used towards the end and I'm going to 
let it set up a little bit and drag it out and create that fantastic honeypot technique and uh, to give it a honeypot t uh, effect. And it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the people who own this have seen that and they love it. So we're gonna try to reproduce that again. Um, now, our greys. Now, we are using uh, Montana spray paint. Uh, we've started to use Montana spray paint because we have found them to work very, very well in epoxy. And uh, we get these from uh, Montana Colors Australia and you can also go to their website and that's mtnaustralia.com.au that's mtnaustralia.com.au for a, a whole range of colors we think they're fabulous uh, so we're using quite a darkish gray and a midish sort of light gray as well to spray across and I'll be mixing that in. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that as we go along. So let's get started. So I have just poured out the iceberg white base and now I'm using my three millimeter notch trowel to spread it. And uh, that will give me a nice even depth of coverage. So this is the Montana spray. I've got a darkish gray and a light gray, as I said, and I'm gonna apply it. Might try the, the dark first. Now what we want is sort of whitish bands of, of color with the gray. So I'm just going to make sure I've got it coming through well. So I've added a bit of black, a little of the dark grey and a little bit of light grey with the spray paint and a little bit of lighter grey on the either ends here. So I'm going to add a little bit more dark. Not a lot. And what I'm going to use is my magic trowel, which I made, uh, very easy uh, to make up, just really from a, a type of uh, book binder, what would you call it? What do you what do you call these things? A display folder, so I cut it out of a display folder, um, got it from a hardware store, it was actually a squeegee, a metal squeegee, uh, with a rubber insert of course, it was about so big, cut it down, a bit of plastic slide in there, and it's perfect, just watch this. The way that the magic trail just spread that out and blended it a little bit. Uh, we will add some isopropyl alcohol in a moment, uh, get the heat gun onto it, uh, blow it around a little bit, make some veins. It's going to look fantastic. Um, and I might do that right now.
So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol, pure, clear isopropyl alcohol. I think this is 99%. In fact, uh, it was only the other week that I noticed, I think we had 100% isopropyl alcohol here. So um, uh, it's all good. Um, and so I'm just going to add the isopropyl over the top and get some fracturing happening. Not too much, but I'm happy with that. So now I've got the black pearl and I'm just gonna do some thin black lines uh, with the black pearl. Now for the, uh, not the sun catcher, it's the diamond dust we're using with this one. Now this has already started to set up, getting quite thick, which is fine, because I can get it out. And it's catching and dragging and making level, oh, awesome effects, just awesome effects. Now I'm gonna hit it with the torch and pop any bubbles. So I've separated the pieces now because I, as I said, I need to just give it a light uh, coverage on this edges here. And uh, I don't like that. I'll get that off later on. Drag that off. There we go, it's gone. And make sure that I get a, a bit of a coverage happening here. Put some in the So the clear flat coat has been laid out. It's gone out very nicely. I put it out at a ratio, of course, mix it to a ratio of one to one, and one liter per square meter. This is about one and a half square meters of tabletop. So I've done 1500 mils of epoxy in total. So that's been spread out. I had these two pieces butted up as you saw, uh, just so that I got a good spread across the whole lot. I then opened it a bit, 
and gave it a thorough wiping around the edges so I get that spread. It goes, rolls over, the epoxy rolls over the edges and I get good coverage along the side here, which is most important. So now for the torch, I'm gonna to give it a couple of torches and then I think this is gonna be beautiful. Uh, after that, uh, we'll be into applying uh, the X Factor in the satin finish. And again, our customers love the satin finish. Um, and these folk, they want the satin finish as well because it lets through the, uh, it lets through the glitters and uh, doesn't block them all off. And you don't get orange pearl and you don't get lines. So it's a brilliant, brilliant product. So anyhow, I'm gonna get uh, started right away with the torches. So I've completed the torching. Uh, that was my first torching. I will give it another one. It looks very good. Uh, look, there were very few bubbles mixed into the epoxy anyhow. So it looks very good now, but I will give it one more uh, run over with the torch to pop any uh, stubborn bubbles. Um, but it's looking really good. But now's the time really to have a really good look uh, and see if, you, if there's any hairs Look, uh, unfortunately, I tend to drop hairs off my arms, my eyebrows, uh, and hairs seem to just miraculously appear uh, in my, uh, you know, worktops here. Uh, and there's one right there I can see right now. So I'm going to get that one out uh, and try not to shed any more hairs over the piece. Gotcha. Okay, it's been more than 24 hours and we have uh, applied the clear flood coat and it's come up beautifully. It's like a sheet of glass. I have already removed the masking tape and that plastic that we use to protect the main frame of the tabletop. Um, very happy about the way it's all come together. Uh, the color of this extension, the way the veins have run, and I'll bring this back together again. And uh, you may not be able to see it, but I can tell you that the veins continue to run right through there. And it looks like one slab of marble, which has been cut. And then, so when the owners want to use this piece, they'll bring it out, bring out the extension part, sit it on top, and there's your extension table. Um, beautiful. So I'm gonna leave it like that because I have to uh, use the X Factor in the moment. Now, in preparation for uh, rolling uh, the X Factor out, I just want to go over a couple of things with you so you quickly know uh, you need two rollers. For a job this size, you need two rollers, a dry roller and a wet roller. Now, if you're doing a kitchen countertop, you possibly might need two dry rollers. So you'll have three in total. Now, I've already delinted these. They've already been rubbed up, up against some sticky tape to remove any of the dust and lint and fibre that may want to come out. I want it to come out on a sticky tape. I don't want it to come out on my board here, on my tabletop. So, assuming we've made up our X Factor and it's ready to go, I'm rolling this roller in the X Factor, charging it up. I'm then getting it out onto my board, backwards and forwards, and I can actually cross hatch it backwards and forwards to get a good coverage. You don't want to flood it, but you don't want to have just a very minute amount either. You want to just get a reasonable amount on the roller. Roll it out backwards and forwards, then with the wet roller, finally with the wet roller, you are drawing it back like this towards you in one motion. That's number one. Number two. And I'm just overlapping by about 20 to 30 millimeters, number three. Number four, I've overlapped that a bit and I've got just a little bit more to go. It's okay, I can go over that again, right to the very edge. Number five, I've done that in five goes, wet roller. Okay, pulling that down. Now I'm bringing out my dry roller. All the dry roller does is exactly the same pass. Dry roller, number one. Drawing it towards you, overlapping it 20 to 30 mils, number two. Number three, number four, and number five. Just goes to show you with this one here, you can get five passes and it's done. And that's all it is with the dry roller. And that 
that's done and finished. You can leave that. Then I'm moving on to this one, wet roller, same way, drawing it back towards the soft light like that, in a final pass for the wet roller, and then your dry roller again. Now these are very simple steps, but they're most important for you to achieve that look uh, and that professional look that you want to achieve. Um, now I'm using, and we recommend, and use four millimeter nap rollers. Okay, you can get a whole range of sizes on the market from various hardware stores. Uh, do not get a 10 millimeter nap roller. Do not use a sponge roller. If you want to achieve the results that you want to achieve, use a four millimeter nap roller. Now this is a 160 millimeter size. You can get 100 millimeter size. You can get 230. You can get 290, I think, one of the bigger ones. Now if you're doing, we just completed a kitchen and we use the 230 size, four millimeter nap roller. And of course, because it's a larger area, um, we needed the larger size. Now I'm doing this X Factor by myself, and you could do that yourself also for this size, but when you're doing a kitchen countertop, when you're looking at something like four or five square meters, which is like 80 to 100 square feet, you know, you need help. You cannot do it on your own. You need someone to be rolling out the wet, getting a thorough carriage, then coming back, as I said, that final pass with the wet roller, and then someone's coming behind you with the dry roller, backing you up, following you along as you work your way across and around the entire surface of your kitchen. That is most important. Please do not attempt to do it yourself. Uh, you won't be able to get uh, uh, the, the finish that you want it to achieve by doing it yourself. Um, that is why often it's good just to even practice with it. No, there's no big deal in practicing, you know, just to have your partner with the dry and you could be on the wet and then you're just doing this over the top and this is how I'm going to do it. Backwards and forwards, then I'm coming back like that. And I'm practicing just so that you get it in your head exactly what you're doing. And then as the wet, you're moving along to this part, further on down, but then the second person with the dry is coming along, practicing just that one pass, okay? I really encourage you to do that, like that, okay? Very good, okay. So I'm just about ready to mix up the X Factor. Um, it's a uh, 10 to one, as I said, uh, ratio, mixing ratio. One container of X Factor will do, that will cover 10 square meters. 10 square meters of countertop, about 100 square feet. So there's more than, you know, you could do two, you could do two large kitchens with it. So there's plenty there to, to cover uh, what you need to, what you need to uh, cover. Okay, so I'm gonna get this mixed up and apply it and uh, show you exactly again how we do it. It's gonna look fantastic, stick with me.
So guys, I've just completed that. That probably took me, it wouldn't have taken me five minutes, I don't think, uh, to do that. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, if you follow the simple process, the, the simple steps which I've laid out, you will achieve a very, very good finish. Now, I'm looking at this, it is wet, but there are no lap lines at all. I cannot see any lap lines running across because I used the wet roller and drew it back to me as a final pass. And then I got the dry roller and I did exactly the same. That process, that pattern will give you a, uh, a finish which will be without lines. Uh, it's gonna dry smooth, silky smooth, and uh, it looks fantastic. I'm very, very happy about it. So we'll come back. Look, this will probably be dry in, uh, in an hour. It will be dry in an hour, easy. Um, and then uh, we'll be ready to, I guess, uh, get it back to, the, to its owners. No, no.